Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. So this is a part of a multi-part series that we're putting out, and this is where we have today um, Keith Herman on the line. I'll start off by giving you a little bit of Keith's bio, and then we're going to do a deep dive into this, into Keith's new book. So it's called Disruption Out of a Box, an Entrepreneur's Guide to Success. To success. Um, first off, Keith, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Oh, man. So uh, I'll tell you, I am excited and pumped to get into this book. You've had me uh, you've had me up all weekend reading it and dissecting it and taking notes, and I don't do that often. I'm not going to lie. Let me just, for, for the listeners uh, that, that aren't familiar with your work, I'm going to start out with your bio just so they have a little bit of your background, um, and then we'll go from there. So first off, um, Keith is an entrepreneur and the founder of IPA Equities. During his career, he's owned, scaled, and successfully exited more than 50 SMEs, including 10 startups across sectors of technology and finance, media, and real estate. Throughout these businesses, he's raised more than a half, uh, $500 million and has participated in more than $2 billion in transactions. Um, and additionally, he's partnered with more than 200 tech companies to establish credibility and attract, to attract capital, increase brand awareness, and form strategic partnerships for enterprise scaling. Um, as a global thought leader, he is highly sought after to serve on advisory boards as a business growth expert and as a keynote speaker. Audiences include Fortune 100 and 500 companies, prominent founders, C-level executives, VC and PC, PE firms, family offices, and more. Um, he's also a contributor to many publications and sits as a judge for technology startup pitch competitions alongside noteworthy VCs and PE firms. Woo, Keith, that is a breathful. I'm excited. Let, let's get into this. Okay. So first thing first, um, I have to ask, I know, I know myself along with uh, many of your peers have been bugging you to write this book for years now. I think I've known you going on five years now. Um, and so how do you feel? It's done. I feel great. It's uh, certainly a huge accomplishment writing a book. My hat's off to any person who's even tried to write a book. Um, it's I mean, it's it's an experience. Let's say, let's put it that way. Anybody who finishes, it's like finishing a marathon. So what um, what prompted you? Meaning, I know, and we're going to get into the book contents, but first I have to get into your thought process here because when I – it was like, obviously, you're always a busy guy traveling, doing other things, speaking, and, and all kinds of stuff. So when you come back up on my radar, I'm like, what's going on with Keith? And, and when you told me you had a book done, I'm like, whoa, this is a big deal. So what prompted the book? Well, um, for many years now, as you know, many, many people have been asking me to share my stories put it into a book and share, um, you know, not just stories, but, you know, some advice about growing businesses and how I've been able to do a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, there, there clearly is a method to the madness here, but I've never really put it down on paper. And it would be great to share with people, especially in challenging times, um, because that's really where it all started is from challenging times. And, uh, you know, having the fortitude to stick with something and see it all the way through and, and get incredible results. In fact, results that are far greater than what even I had thought. Um, and so I thought, you know, why not do it? Uh, I've, I've been very involved in giving back in a lot of different ways. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to put it in a book. I'll put it out there for people who are interested. And uh, if it helps a couple of people, terrific. So uh, I think, it, first off, I think it's going to help uh, more than a couple people. I think it's a great book, and I did read it cover to cover, and I read it. It was going to be read in one sitting. Um, I, I didn't, unbeknownst to me, right, I didn't plan that. I, I woke up, and I was like, I was like, oh, let me start this book. I got, I've got I've got some interviews coming up. I know Keith, it's, I know it's going to be good. Uh, I, just, I ate breakfast, and then after breakfast, I pulled out my phone, and, and before I knew it, it was 4 p.m. I had a meeting coming up, and I'm like, oh shoot, 
week. I haven't done anything today. I haven't eaten lunch. I haven't done anything. Like, I couldn't put it down. So first thing, and we're going to get into how, like, the flow of the book, but what was your process? Because there are a lot of, a lot of even your peers, so business owners, entrepreneurs, executives that are listening to this right now, and they're saying, you know, I, you know, I want to write a book too. I also want to get my story out there. I have some similar maybe backgrounds as Keith and I haven't done it and maybe now's a good time to do it. Like what was your process? Because getting into the book, getting into creating a book can be intimidating. So how did you pull it off? So that's a great question. And uh, especially since I tried to write a book many times. And uh, when I say many, I would say probably several dozen times I would sit wow. down. And I would, yeah, and I would write down my thoughts, and I would just start writing, and I'd get to maybe three to five pages, um, and then I would say, where do I go from here? You know, and then I would just put it away, think about it, come back to it, um, and then I would think, okay, well, I'll add to it. And then it just didn't seem to flow, and uh, it seemed like my thoughts were all over, and the more I wrote, the more I had ideas about other things I wanted to incorporate, so I, I thought there has to be a better way to approach this. And uh, this time, um, I really felt compelled to write it for some reason. I, <laughs> I don't know why this time I felt more compelled, but uh, I thought, you know what, this time I'm going to do it. I'm just going to put my mind to it, and I'm going to have a pragmatic approach to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flesh out uh, – a bunch of different, uh, you know, chapters. What I'm going to do is figure I'm going to write a book that's, you know, around uh, 150 to 200 pages because to me I thought that would be impossible <laughs> to reach. <laughs> but um, I thought, you know what, I'm looking at other books in, 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 in this. Uh, I, I read a lot of books myself, and I'm thinking, you know, this kind of – I want to kind of be in with the other people, you know, share about the same amount of information, so how do I do it? So – um, I took some time to write uh, an, an outline of the things that I wanted to include in the book. And uh, I wrote down basically the thoughts for different chapters. And uh, I figured, you know, hey, each chapter is going to be somewhere to around maybe, you know, 8 to 15 pages. And I figured, all right, you know, 200 pages, 10 chapters, 20 pages, maybe, you know, somewhere, like I said, between 8 to 15 um, and so then I wrote down, you know, roughly, uh, you know, about a dozen ideas and figured, okay, now how do I incorporate this where that it would actually flow from one thing to the next? And what is it overall that I'm trying to get across to people? Um, and, you know, it just started, the, the more I, I tried to get uh, practical about it, the easier it became. And that's where eventually it clicked and I thought, okay, I want to share the process of, of how people achieve great things. And I want to really give people something more than the three steps or the four steps because it's just not that easy. There's a lot more that goes into it, and I want to really share, um, you know, what the process is, not just for myself, but for other people who have achieved incredible things. So I find one thing really unique about this book is that it really – it's multidimensional. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, it's not your typical business book. So meaning part of it, it's part autobiographical. It's part how-to. It's part, it's part telling a story. So if I had to do a combination of books, it could be Think and Grow Rich. It could be The Go-Getter. It could be um, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, all wrapped in one book. So I found at least three very clear defined um, dimensions in the book itself and the way it was. But it was, the way it was connected, it all still flowed. It all still, I mean, it, it still read very well. It was logical. Um, I want to focus a little bit on the on the, the personal side of it. So meaning, you know, there's some people that, that want to write books too, and there's two different ways to do it. And, and there's one that's the way that you did it, which you made it very personal. So, you, you know, you, you told some things in the book that maybe some people wouldn't want to divulge some of the, let's just say, not glamorous parts in their journey. You, you told them and they're in the book. And, and to the readers, by the way, we're not, I'm not going to spoil the whole book for you because I want you to go out and buy it. So we do sell books. Uh, so that being said, um, but you, you made it very personal also. So what kind of advice 
would you give to somebody in terms of um, – because I, I personally, just being honest, I haven't made my books very personal. I've written quite a few. Um, what kind of advice would you give in terms of – or what was your thought process, I should say, around – making that determination of because you have enough let's just say nuts and bolts knowledge in helping you know 200 plus company tech companies and all the other things and accomplishments you could have made it a very like you know nuts and bolts basic black and white this is how you grow your business or something else you could have went a lot of other directions but instead you chose to make it very personal tell us a little bit more about that decision sure i um i thought about keeping it more uh, sterile, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good word. But, um, it, it, yeah, but it doesn't really serve the purpose of what I was going for. Uh, for people who really want to achieve something remarkable, um, it takes a lot, and you, you really have to connect with yourself, and that's what it's really about. And it, I don't really think it's possible to just put out a very, um, you, know, uh, follow, you know, follow the numbers kind of book. Um, I think that people have to understand what the sacrifices, you know, that are made along the way. And it's not just myself, it's other people. And that's why I, I segmented it into three sections, is to show, hey, it's not just me. Um, you have to understand what other people go through as part of a journey, because this is what it is. It's a journey. Um, and it's not through, you know, it's through trial and error, but it doesn't need to be as much trial and error. And I wanted to kind of um, break it down so people could kind of see it from a different point of view and, uh, and say, hey, this is somebody who did it, and it wasn't easy for them. And you know what? It's not easy for any of these other people, but yet they've all done it. And the people do incredible things every day, and somehow they do it, but you know, these aren't people who are winning the lottery. These are people who are really going to work, putting in their time, dedicated, and clearly driven by something greater than themselves. That's awesome. And, yeah, I don't know if I, I – when I was talking about the dimensions, I don't know if I brought it up, but you even wove a love story in there. I was like, come on, Keith, how did you – you put a freaking love story in the business book, and it was good. Like, I'm not going to spoiler it, but at the end I had that little – you know, you watch a good movie, and you're like at the very end, and you're like – you get that little choked up feeling. I'm like, how the hell did you do that, Keith? I can't do that. <laughs> like, I haven't been able to pull that one off yet. You got you got a little bit more age than me. I'm going to work on that one. But I'm like, he wrote – he put in a freaking script. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, I, I, that was not intended. I mean, that's just the truth of what happened. Um, wow. when I share that story. It wasn't. I wasn't sharing that story really as being a love story. But the truth of the matter was, is that was. You it was know, a love story. And somebody. Well, yeah. Again, it's what does what drives people. Yeah. You know, it, it, ultimately, you have to. What is motivating? People. Motivation is a huge thing, and uh, I didn't want to, you know, gloss over that. And everybody's motivation is different. And uh, mm -hmm. in the particular case that I shared, you know, that was just part of of that person learning. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great, um, and, and definitely worth the read for that alone. Actually, I was like, oh my gosh, this is good. And every, anybody that reads that part and they're like, and they and it hits them in that gut, or if they've been in a similar situation, for the more seasoned entrepreneurs out there, that's going to hit them hard. I loved it. It was well, great. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have to say that I think that that was an element that kept me engaged in that particular situation. I might not have, you know. I might. I mean, I'm sure you probably gathered that, but clearly mm -hmm. that was part of my motivation to stay engaged in that situation. Otherwise, I might. I might have just said, "Ah, eh, you know, you're on your own." But uh, for sure, everybody. Um, everybody likes a happy end. All right. Well, let's. Uh, well said. Um, well, let's. Uh, let's. Let's dive further into the book. So I do want to get. Um, I do want to get some of that done. So good. But I can talk to you all day long about your process. For the listeners, they know I can because I got a hundred more questions about that. But I do want to spend some time on the book. So um, let's just. I, I'd like to start kind of towards the beginning. So uh, so you share some of the earlier years and you know experiences with your your father being a businessman and owning a business. I know a lot of people are affected. By by their by their upbringing and you know they're obviously everybody's affected by their family in one way shape or form um, I know for myself you know growing up I didn't realize it till I got much older where I was like whoa my dad was an entrepreneur my whole life I didn't even realize that 
And uh, you kind of mentioned the the whole ticket idea, which I also um, was brought up with. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how that you know that relationship with your father played into you being an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's kind of like driving by a uh, a car wreck. You know, you have to look. And what I mean by that is, the more you're told no, the more you're kind of drawn into it. And you know, my whole life is uh, you know drilled into me. You know that you need to get have security, and security comes in the way of having a degree of some sort. And uh, that was coming from my father's perceived experience. He never had a degree and never went to college, and so that was important to him. Um, he had the best of intentions, but you know, hanging out with him and going to you know all sorts of uh, business meetings and, and seeing what he was doing was a lot more exciting than, you know, being a, quote, professional. Um, and so that was something that I was just around and found a lot more exciting. I tried to find that environment, you know, it, you know with a degree, but um, it just didn't materialize. And the people that I was around encouraged me to go into business because they could see that I had that skill set. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's just, you know, you, you have to stick with what you find interesting and exciting and, uh, you know, sometimes just doing something for the sake of doing it, it isn't satisfying. And so, you know, I needed to satisfy that need that I had and I tried to ignore it for a very long time, but inevitable, you know, I had to, I had to face the music. Yeah, and facing the music you did, can you kind of, uh, and, and you do so well in, in kind of illustrating it in the book, and I, when I read it, I was like, oh, I, again, one of those things, there's just so many points in this book that really just hits you in the gut. I'm like, oh, because I remember my moment. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your moment, like when you knew, when you knew that this was going to, like, you're like, oh, like, this is the route I'm going. Like, I'm an entrepreneur, and if I, if I have, if I have no roof over my head, like, this is just what I have to do. Could you give us a little bit more of that to like transport us there, Keith? Sure. Um, oddly enough, it's what most people, you know, would never even imagine. It's it's equivalent to facing death is really what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're facing this moment. <laughs> Um, that you just, as much as hard as difficult it is as if somebody's passing away, you have to accept the fact that they're gone. And you have to accept this fact that the path that you've been on is is not your path. And uh, it's, it's overwhelming, just like somebody passing away. And it's very difficult. And uh, there's a lot of reckoning and reasoning that you try to go through. You go through different stages, just like a death. Um, and then, you know, hopefully you come around and you decide, I'm not going to live in denial and I'm going to embrace this. And it may be really challenging and it may be really scary, but I, I, I just don't see how I'm going to survive if I don't do this. Yeah, I, I get it. And I, I've never heard anybody say it's like death, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> for, for everybody that's, for, hold on. So for all my listeners, Keith, that are listening to this for inspiration and so how they can become an, an entrepreneur and it's so glamorous. Yeah, Keith just told you, you know, the maker, you know, oh, participated in over $2 billion of transactions. Yeah, you want to be an entrepreneur, it's like death. <laughs> Well, let me, in all fairness, I, you know, I, I should have really finished that thought. Um, <laughs> it's actually, you know, it's actually, uh, you know, it's it's more than that. It's a death, but at the, mm -hmm. at the same time, it's, it's a new birth. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, and it's the new birth that you have to focus on. But it's very difficult to let go of the past. Um, and it, like I said, it's scary. It's unknown. Um, but, you know, there's uh, liberation and freedom, and uh, that's what it really is. It's a moment where you realize that it's an opportunity to breathe free. 
and I, I'm I'm glad you finished this, this thought because it really is a new birth, and birth is painful. There you go. So, uh, can you talk a little bit? <laughs> can you can you talk a little bit more about how age, if you believe it does? Because I don't, you don't write about this in the book, but I was just curious on your thought on this when I was reading it. Is how how age kind of plays a factor or doesn't? I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, but I'd like to hear your thought process on it. Because in my situation, so for you, when you made that decision in the book, um, you're pretty young. But for myself. When I made that decision to go the entrepreneurial route, I mean, I, you know, I, I let's just say I had the, that ticket, so to speak, in terms of the job, the degrees, the all the other stuff that you would have that my, my parents would have wanted. And I was, you know, going on 14 years into my career when I left that to do something that people would say is, comp- well, at the time would say was completely crazy. Man, maybe some people still think it's crazy, which is to be a media guy and to do what I do now. Um, so does age play a factor in that? Or if so, how? does it? I'm just curious because I know there's some people listening right now that they, they, that's on their head too. Maybe they're at their desk right now at, the, at their office and they're thinking, man, I got this thing that I've been wanting to do my whole life, but it's too late for me. Or the opposite. Oh, I'm, I'm just young. I'm just starting out out of college and you know I need more experience before I go down that route. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, that's a great question. Um, the short answer is, is that age isn't really a factor. Um, you know, this is a very much a mental moment uh, to make this decision. And the way I would describe it now is very different than I would describe it if you had asked me at the time that I actually decided to go that route. Um, but what I would say now, being you know a more mature person, is it's it's equivalent to uh, an item on your bucket list. Um, something you have to do before you die. And, you know, you have to decide how long do I want to wait to go skydiving? How long do I want to wait before I'm going to go hike, you know, a magnificent uh, mountain or canyons? Um, you know, I want to go white water rafting. I want to, you know, uh, you know, make love on the beach, whatever. You know, it's something that you just feel compelled to do. And I would say that if you feel compelled to do it, then you should do it. Um, you know, obviously you think, well, you know, I've got all these reasons why I can't. I don't have the security or what if I lose everything or this or that. Um, but the reality is there's no guarantees in life. There are plenty of people who go to work for major corporations who think that they've landed the job of their dreams. They're going to be there for 20 years. They're going to save their money diligently every month, and everything's going to be good. But life just doesn't work that way. Uh, as you get older and you see your friends, you know, pass and, um, you know, what happens to people along the way, that's just an illusion. Um, and, you know, we're told a lot of things that just – you know, never materialize. And so I think that if you're honest with yourself and you say, you know, this is something that I really feel compelled to do, then obviously the sooner the better. Um, so I, I don't really think, like I said, that age is, is a factor. And I think that, you know, look, if you start later, it may actually be easier because you have a lot more experience than when you first start out. But the biggest challenge in the whole process is yourself getting out of your way. Once you decide you're going to get out of your way, that's when it starts to become interesting. Oh, man. Oh, so you, you say it so easily. It's so hard to get out of our ways, Keith. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> but you're right. Well, Once you get... <laughs> but, yeah, but you read the book, and it's not so easy for everybody. <laughs> to get out of their way. In fact, I don't think it's easy for anyone to get out of their way. <laughs> oh, well said. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's people, with... <laughs> they, they, people have to understand. Hey, you're not alone. That's why I made it personal. You're not alone. These are challenges everybody goes through. It's just a question of how you're going to handle it. Perfect transition with where I was going next, Keith. So. Um, the rise and fall chapter. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you, this one it, it just it, it took me there because I because I obviously know you. I obviously known you um, in your in recent years, so I know that the, the nowadays Keith. I didn't know the just getting started out Keith, the just getting it going Keith, and then the obviously um, the, the fall part of it um, earlier in your career. 
um, so the, the savings and loan crisis. So I, I've been a student of the market um, at least since I was 16 minimum. So I know about some of these things that, um, you know, based off of reading them, but I didn't actually live them like you did. And I was, and as I was reading this, I was just trying to put myself into your shoes. And for the, let's put it this way, for, for all the youngins that are going to read this book out there, um, there's a couple of those references in here that I encourage you to, obviously you're going to read this book, but I encourage you to Google them, look it up. Um, and also um, you talk a lot about Michael Jordan, this book, which I always love. And I was thinking about this as, as I was reading that part too. And I'm like, you know, not everybody like reading this, depending on the age, knows the greatness of Michael Jordan. So I was I was excited for you to get this into print because they had LeBron. So I'm like, so that's another thing that I have to get out in this early in the interview. And we're going to talk about this some more later in our interview, um, Keith. But um, if you don't know the greatness of Michael Jordan, go look at some highlight reels on YouTube right now. You can pause this. You have my permission. Come right back to it. All right, Keith. So let, let me get back on track. <laughs> so um, the rise and fall chapter. I mean, how like like sharing this part of it was when I when I felt that I got to really know you and Keith and that just getting started, Keith. So tell us a little bit more about kind of the inspiration for sharing this. Oh uh, wow, um, you know it's uh, you never you, you know you just can't imagine what things are going to be like. Uh, it, it, it's equivalent to. Uh, somebody telling you, you know, if you put your hand on a stove, you're going to burn your hand. You know, you just don't understand what that pain is like. It's it's impossible to imagine. Um, I had no idea what I was headed into, um, what was going to happen, and uh, what it would be like, um, how it was going to really challenge me, um, and uh, and many, many other people. And, you know, it's equivalent to what's going on now. I mean, we're not hearing, unfortunately, about these types of stories right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But you will be hearing them in the coming months um, because there are countless people who are experiencing unprecedented challenges. And, uh, you know, their faith is being tested. Um, it's a tremendous challenge. And, uh, you, you know, it's um, it's something that I just felt it was, <laughs> it was timely. Um, there have been other times, you know, where everything's going great, you know, but it's challenging times where, where I feel it's even more important to share. And, uh, you know, look, had I known that that was ahead of me, I probably wouldn't have signed up. I probably would have, you know, uh, chosen <laughs> to maybe do something different. But, you know, I, I had to follow what I felt was, you know, my path, uh, just like Michael Jordan. Uh, and other people, you know, you find yourselves in, in really challenging times, and you know, it's uh, it, it, it's a it's it's an, a period of reflection that's almost uh, you know too much to handle, but it really uh, it gives you an opportunity to really understand yourself, and uh, it, it's a great opportunity to. Um, you know, understand you know, your personality, what drives you. Um, you know, I utilize that to, to try to solve a problem, which was an economics problem, but I really learned more about myself than anything else, which, you know, helped me as, you know, as time passed. So in the book, and one of the things I like about your writing style is that a lot of the lessons were um, were not necessarily explicit, but they were implicit. And so I gained a lot of um, of I gained a lot out of even you telling your story, and and you you wove into it some of the habits you built and some other things, and at the same time, kind of served as a historian for the area, in my opinion, which is very interesting for anybody kind of that's reading this from the outside looking in. It reminds me of kind of like some of those um, movies or Netflix series that are very L.A. So you talk about things like uh, like you know going to get your your um, you know your your lunch at La Scala it was Wednesday, and you have all these other things, El Paseo, like all these places you ate and you know driving up the hill and down the hill and dropping the kids off at the school and you wove into it a lot of things that are really super LA that I'm like oh my gosh if you're watching this in a movie you'd be like okay I've been there done that like you can see it um but you the habits that were in there I thought the way that you 
kind of you, you explained those and you went over once or twice maybe so that people kind of saw them. I think, um, you know, some of these things where, uh, or, or I, as a question, would you attribute some of these habits that you built to some of the success you had even during these hard periods of time? Um, that's a, a really good question. And my initial response would be probably no. Mm. Um, uh, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a very analytical person, as, as if you'll find it when you read the book. Um, and so it's just kind of my thought process of, you know, numbers and probability. And in large part, um, you know, we create habits um, to create certainty, you know, or perceived certainty. So, in other words, you want to make sure you get up every morning at a certain time. You want to go to the gym. You want to work so many hours. And I, I talk about all this in the book. And I think that, you know, we do that to try to create some certainty to try to get a certain result. And uh, I just felt that, well, I don't want to ruin, ruin the book, but I do talk about when I started off uh, in business, in, in real estate, what my experience was. And, uh, and, and that was proof to me that you just need to do the work. Um, so, you know, I think that it's just, it's what you, it's your belief system. And if you believe that, you know, you need to do this or you believe you need to have a, a cup of coffee at uh, 10, 15 every day, it's just what you believe. And, you know, we're creatures of habit. So, um, you know, I think that that's, you know, we just develop these, these, um, you know, work processes or habits or whatever you want to call them. And it's kind of innate to a certain degree. Some of it's innate and then some of it's learned. Oh, I'll tell you that, that first, that, that story that you share about your first phone, your first four phone calls. Are you kidding me, Keith? I was reading that and I'm like, what the heck? Like, are you kidding me? Four phone calls and that was your result. I could, I couldn't take it. I was like, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> It, it is, um, but, you know, so is everything that follows. <laughs> <laughs> Back. All right, I, well, well said. I'll give you that one, but I was. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, well but, said. You know, there's like, you know, right? There's, you know, there's, life is multidimensional. <laughs> so, you know, you got that in one dimension and then you have the other stuff in the other dimension. Uh, so, Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, let's, um, I, there's a theme that it kind of falls into that chapter, but it also is woven throughout multiple, ch multiple chapters in the book. And really, I, I know you even passed the, obviously, well, I didn't know you that time, but I know you passed the time of writing this book in terms of context and even today. And one thing that I noticed that I thought was really interesting was that you know, some people talk about reading and some people and, you know, they the read a book a week or all these other things. And I've done it for a long time. But it seems to me like when you like the importance of reading and getting new ideas for yourself is probably at a whole nother level. Like you went to you always went back to books. You always went back to bookstores at these pivotal moments in your life to get new tools. Um, so you're not somebody, and just throwing this out there, so you, you, this is your first book. So for me, when I say it, it might not sound as good because I publish books and sell them, and I mean, that's my business. For you, you're doing this, um, you know, to, to share with everyone. But number one, but number two, you've also benefited from many books like the one that you've written for others. So I see that pay it forward in, what, in your work and what you're doing. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of reading and how you've used that kind of in your life to tool up, so to speak? Sure. So, I mean, I talk about this uh, considerably in the book, and I think the most important thing to mention is I hated reading. <laughs> I despised reading. <laughs> that was that, funny. That, that was so that, funny. That is, that is an understatement. Uh, and, and <laughs> so I funny. That is, I, I think that is, um, you know, a huge importance um, to share that with people because I think if people find reading intimidating, they find it boring. You know, they find it a lot of things that are very negative, which was my experience growing up. And, and that's really what I wanted to share first and foremost is, you know, how much I despised reading. Um, and I wanted to share that how that changed 
and, you know, what the result was and how I view it and uh, why it's something that you should really consider. Um, and there's a way I wanted to share specifically the details of it so that somebody could put themselves, you know, in a situation to understand and say, you know what, you know, I should, I'm willing to give this a try. Um, and just like I, I was willing to give it a try and, and be more open to it and understand, you know, how beneficial it can really be. Yeah, and uh, I didn't really understand how much you dislike reading, because I knew you for being a reader and always like digesting ideas, but I didn't really understand how much you didn't like it until, and I have to give a, a shout-out. You, you mentioned multiple books in there, but have to give a shout-out to Uncle Tony. You you mentioned uh, Awaken the Giant Within, and you, and you deliberately say, I didn't want to really read this book, or you say something like that. I'm paraphrasing it, but I'll do at least 10 pages a day, and I'm like, or something like that, and I was cracking up because I'm like, oh, he really doesn't like reading, but but he knows it's necessary. You had me dying laughing with that one. Well, I I don't know if necessary. Um, you know, at the time, I don't know that necessary would have been the best. You know, mm. would have been the most descriptive word for it. Um, but you know, I was out of ideas, <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah, you know, I, I I had to try anything. You know, I was trying all sorts of things. And I figured, all right, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. And I'll, and I'll, well, again, you know, like me, you know, designing the book into so many chapters, I did the same approach with reading. Look, I'll read so much, and uh, hopefully I'll get through it. Yeah, you had me dying. And then, you're, and, and then you're, and I was, and I also laughed at your, um, at your, your process for it. So, you know, judging, I, I've heard, I've heard of, I've heard of, so I know, I think everybody listening has heard this axiom. So you never judge a book by its cover, right? Well, come on, Keith, you yeah. never judge a book by its thickness, really. <laughs> you were killing me. On that. But, but I did. Um, you know, it's like the book's too thick. thick. I'm not doing it. Right. Well, because my feeling is like if you can't explain it quickly, then you know there's you know you're just trying to sell a book or something. I don't know, but uh, you know I want it short and sweet. I want cliff notes. I don't want to read anything. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, uh, but I mean, look, I think to anybody who reads the book with regards to to what I talk about reading, I mean, to them, I would think it would be comical. I mean, to me, it was the process was painful. But I think as an outside person listening to me describe the story, it's probably funny to, you know, a large extent, I would think. Oh, yeah. No, I'm laughing. I'm still laughing thinking about it. So, yeah, it's hilarious. Even hearing you say it now, it's hilarious. <laughs> it looks too thick. Um, let's uh, let's switch up a bit. So I do want to focus on a couple more areas. Um, and So the greatest hurdle. So this chapter was, I mean, it had some, well, all of these things are uniquely you, I would say. So you talk about things like planning, values, um, beliefs. You talk about a lot of different things in this chapter and kind of in this section that build up to it. Um, but that being said, one of the things that I found like really unique about your book that I, I mean, I've read hundreds of books because unlike, un, well, let me, let me preface this. Unlike you, I've always loved reading and I know in my, the way I, why I've always loved it is I've always associated it with money. My parents, when I was a kid, that's how I got allowance. So chores, you had to do chores. But every week, if I wanted my allowance, I had to have a book read, and I had to give my dad a book report. Whether or not he ever read those, I don't know. But somehow that linked that whole thing in my head to where I always associated um, money with books and reading books as getting more money. So I love reading. Um, But that being said, in all the business books I've read – I haven't really seen too many books that were, or if any, off the top of my head that I can remember that actually get into the idea of destiny. So you take some, you add some of the the planning, the values, the beliefs, all these other things into it, but the idea of destiny and how that plays a role in your overall success. Um, Can you tell me more about your views on on destiny and kind of how you and why you incorporated that into this work? Sure. I think, you know, for for people who are listening, you're a little bit of a disadvantage because obviously when you read the book, it becomes clearer. But, um, you know, belief systems are powerful. And, uh, you know, people, you know, believe all sorts of things. And you can't change their minds. Somebody may, be, may believe that, 
you know, they're meant to be a doctor or somebody may believe that they're going to win the lottery or somebody, you know, may believe that they're going to be the president of the United States. And they have these beliefs. Um, and, you know, they perceive that as their destiny, and that is a driving factor for them. And uh, a lot of people ignore these thoughts. Um, they think, ah, it's just a thought. But there are other people who um, who really believe it at their core at an early age. I mean, you can, there are many people who say, oh, since I was, you know, seven years old, I remember I wanted to be an actor, um, you know, or I wanted to be a, a dentist or a pediatrician or whatever. Um, and so, you know, I think that it's very important to acknowledge that, that everybody has these, um, these thoughts and these ideas. Um, and to some people, it's just a thought or an idea, but to other people, they firmly believe that that is their destiny. And I think that, um, you know, that deep down, and I go through in the book and break it down so people understand, um, you know, why, you know, they can understand why it's their destiny and they can understand how to get there. Um, so it, it's, I think it's very important. Not everybody has those, those moments where they feel like this is my destiny, um, but a lot of people do. And I think it's, it, it's important to be in touch with yourself and to spend time to really um, you know, explore those thoughts and ideas and to see whether or not they're, they're really your destiny or not. And, and that's what the book in, in large part is about, is going through that process. Yeah, and what I and and what I and again, I agree with you that the reader is that the the listener here is at a little bit of a disadvantage because of the um because I haven't read the book yet. Which, by the way, go out and get that book. Really easy to find, and we're going to have links in the show notes for this. So just uh, just uh, don't forget to grab that. And also um, to learn more, go to keithherman dot com, which we're going to have links in the show notes for that also. Um, but I do want to stick on this concept of destiny a little bit longer. And the reason why is because I think when most people think of destiny, especially um, business people that are very analytical, because I want, I want to frame this back so that people re remember who you are from the bio, because we've been talking for a little bit now. So just to put this in, in, in perspective, and Keith talks about this in, in the book also, but he lives on Excel. So Keith is an Excel guy. He's nuts and bolts. He's, um, you know, it's by the numbers. Even even as your your answer to my previous question, Keith, do you think habits played a role? You're like, no, I didn't expect you to say no. And then you said you're you're more of a probability guy, and you're looking at it. And even back then, you were talking about and you and you said this probably two or three times in the book at different portions. You said I'm a disciplined investor, something along those lines. Um, and I'm a disciplined investor. So you always go back to the numbers. So I think. The fact that you wrote about destiny is possibly a little bit different than maybe somebody who is, you know, and, and, I, and I fit in this camp too, by the way, so I'm not picking anybody out there for whoever's listening, but the law of attraction and other things, which we're going to get into um, your idea of alignment and things like and alignment and other things in, in, in one of our upcoming episodes uh, in this series, because I do want to get into your views on that. But the idea of destiny coming from you is slightly different. It's not this like pie in the sky type thing. Um, so how does somebody that, let's just say, um, with your background, somebody that's listening to this right now, that's typically been, you know, very nuts and bolts and not like they just, they live on the end, I'll just stereotype, the engineer type, they live on Excel and maybe they haven't necessarily been open to the idea of destiny, but now they're listening to this right now. And they got a guy that's just like them. That's a numbers guy. That's a Liz on Excel guy. And now he's talking about destiny. I think that can that might be a little shaking him just slightly. Um, what would you tell to that person that's listening to this that hasn't really been necessarily open to that idea in the past? Well, if I understand your question correctly, um, I would I would say that Excel and analytics and everything else are just tools tools that you use to realize your destiny. That's how I see it. But you have to start off, you know, you have to start off with a thought or an idea, mm -hmm. right? And that thought or that idea may just come to you organically. It may be something that, like I said, I want to be president. And you have that thought and you say, you know what, I really believe this. That is my destiny. How do I get there? Well, you know, I have to maybe go to law school. I have to 
become a senator or a congressman or whatever. Um, and, you know, along the way, you know, you may get a degree, you may, uh, you know, you may go into the military. I mean, there's a lot of things that you may do which are necessary for you to, to get to where you're going. And using tools uh, are, are a part of that. And uh, being analytical is great. Uh, but it may not get you to where you ultimately want to go. I mean, it's just that they're just tools. Um, you know, uh, you, you know, it's like using tools to put together a car to drive somewhere, right? They get you where you're going, but it's not, it's not. Uh, you know, you could also buy a car and, and not, be, you know, not utilize them. So, I mean, they're helpful and useful, um, but they're not the key the key components of what you really need. So that's why, while I think that they're important, I don't want to place too much emphasis on them and say I have to live and die by the numbers um, because you have to look at something, the, the greater picture and from a larger point of view. No, that's awesome and and, uh, and and well said and 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 I think that for the right people that need to hear that right now that are placing too much of an emphasis maybe on the on the tool part of it, I think that that's exactly what they need to hear at the exact right time. So that's awesome. Um, so Keith, looks like we're I, I tell you this this time flies by talking to you and uh, looks like we're about out of time for this episode. Um, but we're going to uh, just so for everybody listening, I want you to make sure to tune in to part two of this interview. Um, we should be right after this one. Definitely check it out. We have a whole lot to cover still, so we, we're going to get into mystic money. We're going to get into mapping and mastering your success. We're going to get into a little bit of the uh, of this love story that we talk about, or that excuse me, that Keith wrote about of Thomas and or Tomas and Elena. Oh my gosh, it's a it's a love story. It's an entrepreneur story. It has its ups, it has its downs, has everything in between. I was like, Keith, come on, are you making this up? Did this really happen? It was that freaking good. I'm like, did you get the script off of somebody's desk? Um, because I it, it, it read just like, like I said, like a Netflix um, series or something. It was definitely a binball portion of the book, like many of the portions were. Um, so, Keith, again, thank you for coming on today. And to the listeners, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. Um, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there. But also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Keith, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, and, and I hope everybody enjoys the book.